Today on the grid, our topic is the reason you don't like shooting that is that that's like the whole topic. We have a very special <laughs> in-studio guest. It's British superstar Dave Clayton. Oh, yeah. The real Woo! rocket man is not gal banting around for a change. He's actually here. We've got news. We've got some lovely giveaways. And it all starts in just 21.3 seconds. Let's go. Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Brexit episode of The Grid. <laughs> Scott Kelby here. Kuhn is here. And we have a very special, yeah. special guest all the way from Swing in London, or Cross swinging swingman. He's not really, he's not really from London, but he is from the UK. Fake, fake news. <laughs> fake, <laughs> fake news. Not from London. Actually, he's from about what an hour, hour or so. Yeah, hour west. Hour I'm west. from London. I just don't live there anymore. Yeah, they yeah. they he was there for a brief time, and they asked him to leave and never come back. Yeah. But we love him here in the United States because strictly we love his accent. That's it. That's Hi there. True. I'm Dave Clayton. I've come from the great United Kingdom. That is the worst American accent ever. It's really not. That's really not a bad American accent. I just feel like I'm, every time I try and do it, I just feel like I'm, hi, I'm Troy McClure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I get my American accent. That's, well, it works. Well, anyway, we're glad to have you here. Dave's here doing some classes with us. Uh, Dave, this is your 10th class. Congratulations. Thank you. 10th yeah. class yeah. with us at Kelby One. And Dave has been, a, of course, a fixture at many, many Photoshop World Conferences. And it's just a, just a cool cat. It's like that. That's the way it is to so stay the hell back. There he is, Dave Clayton. And you notice his logo up in the corner? Take a yeah. look at that logo. And then look here on the set. Who's repping right there? Let me move this out of the way. Dave Clayton logo. If you don't have your Dave Clayton shirt, you're not happening. I don't know where you can buy a Dave Clayton shirt. I had this one custom made. Uh, available on all good websites and some rubbish ones. And, and you know what? If, if you don't have another thing for Dave Clayton, you can also get his book. He has a book. He does have a book. You mean what? This book. That, that book. book. How do I do that in InDesign? That's crazy. It's got yeah. a great forward. Are you yeah. the well? Yeah, the, your your forward is, is is certainly the best part of the book. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, that that book has done very well. Yes. 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 It's, it's and it's super highly rated. It's it's sold in its tens. <laughs> they almost they've almost reached twenty sales. Yeah. Kills it. But anyway, but uh, Dave is a graphic designer. Yeah. And uh, a lover of people, of all people, and of sheeple. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. So, anyway, Dave's here doing some classes, so we're really glad to have him here. We asked him to be on the yep. grid today. How many appearances on the grid is this? It's got to be like 10 or more. No, no, I think it's, I think it's like five or six. Oh, come on. Yeah, it feels like 10. Yeah. How about I, I the one where we did the, we brought our we, guitars on that and we was sang? the old set. Should yeah. I stay or should I go? Should I stay or I should I go? I think that was my first one. Yeah. That was anyway, good oh, I remember that British invasion. That yeah. was... We're glad to have you here. We're going to talk a little bit about Photoshop uh, today. Uh, mm -hmm. Our topic today, let me make sure I have got the, it worded right, is the reason you don't like shooting that is, and that's what we're going to talk about. This was based on a, a real life experience I had this last week. Uh, I was in Utah last week um, for the, uh, the Outsiders Conference, which is in Kanab, Utah. Kanab, Utah. And, love it. And I drove, I'm driving, Kanab, Utah looks like Radiator Springs. There's a very does, small town yeah. in the middle of Utah. Yes. It's very, very small. With the rocks. And, yeah, and there's yeah. the mountains and stuff around it. And so I drive past this restaurant, like there's not many restaurants. It's a very mm -hmm. small town. And I go, I think Eric Kuhn and I ate at this restaurant when we went to Arizona and Utah years ago. Yeah, yeah. I sent Eric a picture. He's like, that's the place, Big Al's Burgers. Big Al's Burgers. Went there and had a Big Al Burger. It was quite tasty. It's quite tasty. I remember the the other thing was we ate there twice, the, didn't the, we? The, the shock where it said, you know, uh, open carry permitted, like right on the door, huge. Yeah, and bring I your like, gun. Whoa, I didn't. I wasn't expecting. We did that. not bring our gun, so <laughs> it was. Uh, hey, look how much taller I am than you guys, right? I got the tall seat. I never I've get got, that. I've, one. Got, I've got the broken seat. I've like, one, the one that gradually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, we, we, we tend to do that. We tend to do that. The guests. <laughs> the guests. We throw you yeah, off. We kind of you know, that, that keep you on your toes. Yep. Yeah. But uh, thanks uh, to the folks at the Outsiders Conference. I had a great time. It is a very, very nicely done conference. Very well run. Lots of great instructors. Julianne Cost was <clears> one of the instructors. <clears> and yeah. I sat in. Uh, not only did I sit in one of Julianne's classes, I'm going to show you a tip that Julianne did. 
That yeah, is it's a great really, tip. It's a too. great, great tip. tip. I'm going to be showing you that here in just a moment because uh, we have you know Photoshop and Lightroom and a photo photography trivia. Uh, but I had a great time. Thank you to the folks at B&H Photo who sponsored me to be out there. I had a great, great time. And it was, it was full, of, packed full of people, everybody having a great time. Very, very nice. I got to hang out with my buddies. Got to hang out with Vanelli. Oh, Vanelli. Yeah. He came to London. Did he? Yeah, last October. Yeah. Photography show. For Rocktober. Mm. Yeah, so V was there and had a great time with him. He's, he is just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Insane. <laughs> and that makes the fun, it makes it a lot of fun to be around someone a, that's legitimately he's a crazy. Glowing spirit. Yes. He is. He's a glowing spirit. That's a good way. He's one of glowing those. Glowing spirit. You know what he is? A glowing spirit. He is. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's see what else happened. Um, I'm off to Switzerland this week. So uh, my wife for Christmas bought me and my brother a trip to, to Switzerland. Uh, I have no other reason to go to Switzerland. Just my brother and I try to take a trip every year. So uh, we're heading to Switzerland. I haven't been to Switzerland since I was dating my wife. So 34 or five years ago. And uh, so I, I'm, gonna, I'm looking. You know, I hear that the cheese there has holes in it. Yeah, and also yes. don't mess with their army because they've got these really little handy really knives. Good handy they can knives. trim your nails and oh, uh, yeah. file them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of respect for the Swiss Army <laughs> it's knives. They're good Swiss and Army knives. Anyway, and Toblerone, yes. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. I hope to, uh, I'm going to be doing some things. Sounds very interesting. you got Swiss <laughs> cheese, chocolate, and knives. And, <laughs> and I'm going to be doing some things for Lexar, the memory card folks. I'm going to be doing some things for them while I'm out there. So that's kind of fun there that's a um gonna be sharing some posts and some pictures awesome. and stuff from from switzerland uh it's gonna be a little chilly so i want to dress warm but uh, that's i'm leaving there all right what else is coming up uh mr Incuna and my you know we mentioned we had a new york city workshop not only is it sold out there is a long waiting list um so uh that's great yeah, my lisbon workshop one. is sold out my new york one with mr kuna is sold out in fact we were just we just came from a lunch meeting where we we're working on some neat stuff we're oh, going to yeah. do and we got some stuff we're going to do in new york you should come to london i'm coming to london yeah. and my third workshop of the year will be in london this fall and i expect that dave clayton will make an appearance there as the as our secret pro photographer yeah <laughs> now and if you're wanting to get on the super special early sign up list to find out when that those tickets for london go on sale just go all the way to the bottom all of the site scroll, there scroll so scroll scroll going and then right you're gonna have right there advanced notice email get on list. that email so get list. on that email list and then you'll find and, out and you will know <clears> before <throat> we announce to the public the tickets are for sale so you'll have your first shot at it but uh, anyway it's gonna be a lot of fun london is a great town especially when dave's not there uh, it goes up, but when I was just in London uh, in November, and we had a kebab. We had a kebab, and we went. We watched the Bro the West End show, which is like a Broadway show, but in 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 England where you can't understand any of the words. Um, Pretty Woman, you know, like the movie Pretty yeah. Woman. Yeah. You know what was odd about it though? It was very well done. It's a musical. All right, first it's a musical, so yeah. it's Pretty Woman the musical. The music was all done by Brian Adams. Right, the rocker, you yeah, know, yeah, Canadian yeah. rocker. Yeah. But the weird thing that surprised me about it, it was very well done. It was a word for word rereading of the movie. Like the script was the movie. You knew what they were gonna say next. They didn't change it at all. No, it was it was the exact movie. Yeah. And with a song here and there. Songs were good. But I was expecting they were gonna kinda it's the mm -hmm. same story, but they'll tell it in their own way. You Interesting. Know? Like, you know, if you go see the, the movie Grease on the West End, which I I saw a couple of times. It's the same basic story, but it's different. I mean, you still got Zuko and you know, but yeah. it's, it's different. I'll tell you one I rec highly recommend because it's coming to Broadway in June is Back to the Future. Because oh, it's good, they, huh? they, they, there's some bits in the film that they can't obviously put on stage, but there's a couple of different differences to make it just slightly different. Yeah, that's But the, right. the story is still expect. essentially the same, but the special effects, the way they do the car and everything is, I'm, I'm going next, next week to see it for the fourth time. Wow. wow so yeah. good yeah he knows his well West I, could, I could see where that would be good I, the back future is just great yeah. all right we have a lot of giveaways today because that's our thing tell us about our giveaways mr well Gale. let's see first we're going to be giving away a platypod disc this is a little disc we have right up there on the table let me see can't, if i can reach can't it. Get out, I it, it the little disc goes on the bottom of your tripod oh, that's it right there yeah or bottom of your camera which mounts to it to any kind of ball head um, but it's great because it's that round design, so you can put your camera in any which way. You have to put it in like the exact way. 
Um, really nice. And then we're giving away a copy of Scott's, Scott's Travel Photography book. So right there, you can go get it wow, over so there fast on with that stuff. Amazon. That's the same size as my book. It is the same size as yeah. Dave's book. And like we'll probably be giving away one of Dave's books. Yeah. I would think. We're giving away know, one so. of Dave's yeah, books? Yeah, I thought yeah, one to give away. Well, there's Dave's, thousands Dave's of books. them sitting in boxes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then we're going to be giving away another one of Scott's books, the Light It, Shoot It, Retouch It. My book. new one. So I did a, I did a thing print. last week. I did a live shoot from the book mm -hmm. with one of the models from the book. It went so well. And we actually broke a record for the number of books that were sold that night. We like, it was incredible surprising and shocking and all that stuff anyway uh but you can go buy one you can go buy it right now in ebook there's only eight left in stock and they ordered four million <laughs> four million yeah i've still got three million nine hundred ninety nine thousand ninety they always print four million at a time but anyway you wouldn't you wouldn't believe someone's gonna win that today <laughs> All right. Uh, what and else? Then we've got On One No Noise 2023. This is a great tool from On One to remove noise out of your images. Oh, um, yep. You definitely want to use tools like this if you're shooting at like a high ISO. It's great. It's like you can take your shot from like 6400 ISO down to about 800 ISO. And can I say something about that plugin? Yes. Every time you launch it, a splash screen comes up with a picture taken by oh, Mr. Kuna. Yes, it is. Mr. Kuna splash screen. Thank you. And then um, we're giving away a copy of, or not a copy, a V-flat from V-flat World. Then this one is for US shipping only. So you have to be in the US to win this one. Uh, we'll, uh, V-flat will mail you out a V-flat, which is, uh, but it's a foldable V-flat, which They're is They're really, really, that. really nice. We use them in our own studio. Yeah, exactly. It folds up, it's really easy. You can see how they're using it on the site there. Uh, tons of versatility, and then it just pops right into your car. Uh, and then everybody can get 10% off over there by using the code KELBY10 at checkout. Also, and that's it. You know who's watching tonight? He's there. He's there. It's the British can, invasion. You can Full feel British it. Invasion. Glenn Lewis, our buddy Glenn, is watching. Yep. In fact, um, I, I, I was, let me see if I have this picture of, of, of me and Glenn and Dave when we all first hung out for our first time in 2010. In 2010. Wow. Now, I do have this picture of yeah. us. Let me see if I can get it to open here. Give me a second here. We got people joining us all over the world, speaking yep. of. And then there's the British invasion. Oh. Yeah, that's So us. young. There so young. young. Wow. We were all so Fresh, young. Fresh, naive. Let's see. No that, criminal records. You realize, no. yeah. so that was, that was 13 years ago, right? Was it 13, 13 years ago? 13 years ago. Yeah, so that, was a the, that was the Covent ago. Garden where we had the, um, the guy with the Mohican. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That wow. was that was fun. And then wow. luckily that big flag was right there. Speaking of Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> I had another shot in here of us too, but I don't know where it's Do you at. know why why I remember that one was because me being the non photographer turn up with Scott and Glenn and we go to the studio and uh so I brought my camera with me with the lens and I'm mm -hmm. like Scott's doing the photographs and I'm trying to sort of take photographs in the background and I just crack Scott in the back of the head with the lens on my camera, like full on come around and crack him. And I was mortified because <laughs> I thought the most unprofessional thing you can do is be the crap photographer and smack Scott in the back of the head with a big lens. And you know what the first thing I thought was, that's the most unprofessional <laughs> thing anyone's <laughs> ever, ever done to me. Yeah. All right, I found another picture. This is, this is Glenn and I on the, is that the Millennial Bridge? Where is that? Uh, that yeah, Bridge? that was 20, that was when we first met, 2010. That was the day I met Glenn Dewis. Yeah, that was the day you met Glenn and now you guys are great wow. friends. And, and he's, he's, a, a, he's a legend. Last he from the past. He's a legend. All right, and, and I was young and wearing my, see, I was still supporting the Bears. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got lots of hellos out there, though. Yeah, from everybody joining us over, all over. We got uh, Carl saying hi from Quebec. We got Pat from saying hi from Northern California. Doug from Western Iowa. Rhonda uh, from a cold north in Ye Yellowknife, way up in Canada. The, the uh, what is that? Uh, Northwest Territory. And then uh, Tim Oliver saying hey, hi from Tim. Gilbert, I Arizona. I met yeah. Tim in there person. Very nice guy. And then John Duke John saying hi. John Dukes, yeah. met John in New York. Yep. Yo, John and, and his wife. And Stuart Greenberg nice. saying Look hi from Dallas. Wait, 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 wait. John had a comment. Go back up yep. there. What an awesome sight to see Dave Clayton there. 
There you go. A lot of people get that. A lot of people. Alex I Hunter think, saying I think hi my from mum's Aberdeen. watching. I, I think my mum's watching as well. Shout out to, there you go. to your yeah. mum. Want to give her a shout out? Hello, mum. And then uh, that was Rose. Really hard, <laughs> Rose Kieran saying hi from, hi, from wonderful New Zealand. John Taylor saying hi from Salt Lake City. Antonio saying hi from all the way from Madrid. We got Scott saying hi from Corpus Christi. I'll be driving through there next week. Uh, and then Graham Pace saying hi from Malta. Wait a minute. If I'm gone next week and you're gone next week, who's doing the grid? I, that's a good I'm question. I'm going to stay on for an extra week. That's Are a good question because right. Christina knows. All right. So I'm sure Does there's Christina a, know? She knows. Yeah, all Christina's kinds of, got it under control. She's got it under control. All right. So um, I, we'll talk about our topic here. It's already time for a break, so we're going to go ahead and, and do that. But when we come back, our, our topic this week is based on something that happened out in Kanab, mm -hmm. Utah. Knab. And so that inspired this conversation, which I think maybe will help some folks. Not to be confused with kebab. Not kebab. Not kebab either. It's not a kebab. Yeah. kebab. Kebab. It's a kebab. Kebab. We're going to take a short pause. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the reason you don't like to shoot that is dot, dot, dot. We'll fill in the dots after the break. People say to me all the time, Jeff, you don't really take all those pictures on the iPhone. You're kidding, right? You actually shoot with other cameras. I do shoot with other cameras, but the majority of everything I do is on the iPhone. I just treat it like a professional camera with time-honored photographic techniques. And I would like to pass some of my tips and tricks off to you in my upcoming Kelby One class about how to shoot the iPhone like a pro, the advanced version. What will you learn? Let me tell you. I'll show you how to do great panoramic images, long exposures handheld, stop action with burst mode, portraits and lighting, how to do great headshots on the iPhone. We're gonna show you night mode, shooting in the night, which is really cool. And of course, everybody's favorite, sunsets worth framing on the wall. Come join me, Jefferson Graham at KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. <laughs> hey, we're back. Scott's here. Eric's here. Dave Clayton, British superstar. Dave Clayton joining us, and it's time for a Lightroom Tip. That's pretty good. That was good. That was good. Yeah. 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 Maybe. That's good. Maybe a fraction of something. All right. We're, we're back an interesting camera angle um <laughs> all right so before i show you this lightroom tip i want to give a shout out to julianne cost i from adobe i sat in uh one of her sessions and i've never sat in a julianne cost session where i didn't i didn't learn something and she showed a particular technique that i thought oh man that's i don't use it i don't use this thing in this way but i will from now on and i want to show you this it's a masking trick 
So it is, a, I'm going to show you to in Lightroom. You could do it in Lightroom, but you can also do it in Photoshop in the camera raw because it is masking. It's really good. Here we go. All right. So we have this picture from, I didn't take this this week. This was taken with Miss, me or Mr. Kuna while we were getting burgers in Utah. Yeah, yeah. All right. this, and I remember this vividly because that was the skies we got for three days. Yeah, we never got a cloud the entire time. Cloud. All right, but let's say that I want to select, I just want to work on this particular uh, rock, what would you call it? Rock butte. formation, butte. butte. I want to work on this butte, but I don't want to work on the rest of the buttes. Now, if you go to the masking and you say select subject, what does it do? Give it a second, it selects all the buttes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of buttes. That's a butte. All right, I don't want that. So all you have to do is this. Pick the butte that you want. Go and get the brush tool, all right? This and, is the counterintuitive part for right. me. And you're going to paint over the butte that you want. This is the butte I want. Now, you'll notice it's not a very nice yeah. paint job. Yeah, you're like, it's as just sloppy, see, right? Very sloppy, but you're just... But that's what you want, kind of right. sloppy selection. You just want to go, this is what I want, all right? Then, here's what you're going to do. Here's the trick. Ready? Mm. You're going to hold the Option key on Mac which would be the alt key if you're working on That's a PC. The That's the key. Take a look on screen. Mm -hmm. And do you see right under the word mask one, it says add and subtract. Now, by the way, if you don't see these for any reason, you would click on the word mask. Like if you look and say, Scott, I don't see those buttons, just click on the word mask and they appear. But watch, add and subtract, watch them. Because when I hold option, it changes to a single new button called intersect. All right. Ah. And it intersects. So what we're going to do is you're going to click on intersect and it's going to go, okay, you have a mask in place. What mask do you want to intersect with this? I'm going to use color range. All right. Oh boy. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to click on that. Butte. Butte. Wow. And look at that. It only selects that one that I painted over. It's so crazy because it's like you're, you're doing a Venn diagram in, <laughs> in Lightroom. There you go. <laughs> it's so cool. So what you're basically saying is, is... So now you can move like you can show them. Like yeah, now I, can, now I can go like, and I can go to... That's what is so cool is now you can adjust Let me just that scroll view. down. Why isn't my thing scrolling? Oh, because I got this. Goes. My, my, my uh, whatever. It's too small. Yeah, it's too small. But you can go in here and you could open up the shadows or do whatever you yeah, want just to. And that it's just the butte. You could even do something really bad and like change the color of just that butte. Like yeah, you could go to or, hue you know, don't and do, do something terrible. Don't, you know. don't, don't go too far. Oh, no. no we're, now we're getting bad. Thank you. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> anyway, but I thought that was a really great use of yeah. Intersect. So hats off to Julianne. Awesome. Her whole class was that. great. Oh, she was so funny too. Oh goodness, she was she so was terrific. Yeah. Oh, she's great. She yeah, was really she really great. And I've ne I've sat in so many classes of hers over the years. I've never sat in one where I didn't learn something. She always has got that little something. You were just like, I never thought to use this tool that way. I never thought to do this anyway. So hats off to her. Thank you for for giving me something new to share with you guys. And now let's get to our topic. So our topic mm -hmm. today. Uh, I'm out there shooting with some guys. So it was a bunch of us guys went out. You know, we got a couple of cars and went out shooting. We went to the Escalante staircase. Very nice. It's muy mm -hmm. Escalante. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're out there shooting. And one of our guys kind of hangs back. And he's like, he didn't make it all the way down to the end of the trail. And he's just kind of like, eh. Nah. So anyway, uh, I heard he, he was back that way. So I went back to him. And I'm like, you know, hey, what's going on? And he's like, you know, I, I just don't get the landscape thing. You know, I'm just... I don't know, I'm just really not into it and I, and I don't get it. And, 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 and I said to him, do you know why you don't like landscape photography? And he's like, why? Because you've never taken a really great landscape shot. And I said, so he's a portrait photographer. So I said to him, let's just say that your first two or three shoots that you did with, of people you shot people that weren't very photogenic. They weren't really great looking on camera. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the right sculpting to their face. And you take these couple of shots. And so when you take two or three shots of some people and they don't turn out good, what do you think? Yeah, I'm just not it's a not portrait. It's not my thing. It's not yeah, my it's thing. Not I'm my not thing. a portrait yeah. photographer. I'm just, it's just not me, right? So, and I said, but how did your first shoot come out when you shot portraits? really good mm -hmm. so you feel like i got this i can do this his problem was he had never really had that incredible morning at dawn where 
the, the water in the lake is still, you have a perfect reflection. There's an amazing sky and it's catching all this color and you're standing there and you're looking in the back of your camera and you press the button and you're, you can't believe what you see on screen. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at your buddy, you're going, are you seeing yeah, this? You Can see you it? believe this? This is, awesome. this is amazing. And, and, and I think this happens to a lot of photographers that you go and you shoot something and you don't have success and you go, I'm not a landscape photographer. It's just not me. I don't get it. I don't see why people like it, you know, but I will say this, the, the thing I love about landscape photography is normally you don't do it by yourself, which is good because you don't want to get stuck out some weird place, right? You don't want to yeah. hike out two miles or three miles <laughs> and then no one ever sees you again and you die, which, you know, <laughs> so, um, but I, it is a photography, I think, is always more fun when it's a group sport. So you have a couple mm -hmm. of buddies. In our case, there was like six or seven of us. We're all out there. We're laughing. We're telling stories. You're walking a long way, but you're just telling stories and you're laughing and you're mm -hmm. stopping and shooting things and you're making fun of them for shooting. Like, you're shooting that? What a loser. You know, that's kind of what we do. Uh, remember, there's only, there's only uh, two things that photographers, there's only one thing that two photographers can agree on, and that's that the third photographer sucks. Anyway, but you're out there, you're having fun, you're laughing, it's a beautiful day, you're out in nature and all, and then you get there and you take a beautiful shot, you're like, man, I can't wait till the next shoot. But if you go to an okay place and you get an okay shot, mm. you're like, I don't get landscape photography. But it's not just about landscape, so don't take it as we're just talking about landscapes. It's really about any, any genre or anything that you shoot. If you feel like you have a knack for it, and you get good results, it's fun. If you don't get good results, you feel like you don't have a knack for it and it's a drag. And I think this affects a lot of people yeah, that this. don't try. So Eric Kuna doesn't shoot people. Now, I will say this, part of it I is that do. Eric hates yeah. people. I do, I do hate hates people. Hates them, yeah. hate, hate, hate. I felt that. This don't week. you? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's why we're you know, that's why that. I, I had know, to separate them. I, I totally, I totally see what you're saying. I totally agree with this. Right. Like that's definitely happening. Now, here's the thing. Eric's a good photographer. Eric shoots all kinds of different stuff. If I went in the studio and I hired a, a model that we've shot before that we know looks great on the first shot and I put up some lights and I said, Eric, stand here. Eric would take a picture. He'd look on the back and go, holy crap, I'm a portrait photographer. Oh, I can do this. So much of it has to do with getting that right person or that right location or everything at the right time. And I don't care if it's architectural photography, travel photography, if you travel to some place that's super photogenic, if you go to Paris and you take pictures, you're gonna come home with great pictures. However, if you go to, I don't know, Raleigh, North Carolina, you may not come back with pictures that look anywhere like what you would get if you went to Paris. Swindon. Nothing against Raleigh, Swindon. Swindon. Go to Swindon, <laughs> England. It is one of the, maybe perhaps not as photogenic as other cities. Let's yeah. just leave it at that. But I would say that it's, and, and Dave, you could say, yeah. it, it, would it be hard to make a really fabulous picture of, of the city in there? Yeah. I, I, Don't sugarcoat <clears throat> it. Tell us how no, you no, feel. No, no. I, it, <laughs> yeah. one of, I mean, we, we're like half an hour from Stonehenge. We're half an hour from the Cotswolds. But actual Swindon itself, it, it'd be architecture. It'd be something you'd, you'd struggle. But the thing I love with landscape is why give up on it? Because it's always out there. You know, you've got to get a person yeah. in the studio to settle up and practice it. But yep. landscape is always there. And then the weather just changes for you. So there's no excuse to, n to not succeed in it because you've got more opportunity to try it. Right, but the problem uh, is, but is there's there's a lot of effort that's yeah, going yeah. to it. Yeah, there's a lot right. of effort. Like you know, you have to go to some place. You know, like we li we live in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. That's where our studios are. Tampa Bay is not known as a landscape anything. Nobody comes to Tampa Bay to shoot landscapes. There's a lot of cool things to shoot in here. Yeah. Landscapes really is now. That doesn't mean you can't make a decent shot, but you're not going to make a shot like you do in Utah. You're not going to mm -hmm. make a shot. I, I actually told this story when we were out in uh, I, during one of my classes. I told the story that uh, I was out in either Utah or Arizona one time and I noticed that everybody there was German. Like it was German tourists everywhere. It didn't matter where we went or where we went to shoot, busloads of German people mm -hmm. everywhere. And Ger the mm -hmm. German people are very, very nice. And they're very chatty, you can go up and talk. And yeah. so, so anyway, I was talking to this, this group of Germans and they're, they're, they're like all shooting and they're like, oh, what kind of camera you got? What kind of lens? We're all just, you know, chatting regular photography stuff. And I said, you know, can I ask you a question? I said, you know, uh, there are so many Germans here. 
And I said, you know, what is it that, you know, is there like a travel agency that says, yes, go to but Utah? Yeah, this is the place to and go. He, and he said, oh, no. He said, here's what it is. He goes, Germany is got so much. You know, he says, we have rivers and we have waterfalls and we have beautiful forests, right? They have the Black Forest. Mm. And we've got all these amazing things mm -hmm. in Germany. Germany is a photographic wonderland. But we don't have this. Yeah. And he points to Utah and Arizona <laughs> out there. And he goes, this is the one thing we don't have. And so in Germany, it is a German photographer's dream to come to the American Southwest. You know, right where this, this yeah. conference was, right? Yeah. I'm like, you know, and I, guess I was telling the crowd, you don't know how lucky we are. Parts of the world, they just want to come to shoot this because it is so unique. And here we are, yeah. you know, it's in the middle of it, in a classroom, sitting in a classroom. <laughs> Well, not shooting but anyway but what this all comes around to is if you put yourself in Kanab, utah right or you go to page arizona or you go to monument valley or you go to arches national park or anything you're putting yourself in a place where if you get up at dawn or you shoot at sunset it is almost impossible to take a bad landscape photo but it's you're saying that you're saying the key thing there the key thing there is going through that effort it to make an that, effort. that great photo. It but is. if you do that, I'm with you. That if you do that and you get that great photo, that hooks you. Yeah. That if, hooks you go, you. if your first landscape shoot is in Montana, right? You're at some amazing national park or, you know, you're Acadia National Park up in the north or, uh, you know, if you're in some place. Anything with place, national park behind park it. In it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're in Yosemite and you take these shots, you know, you're going to be like, Man, this is my thing. I'm really good at this because you're standing in something that is in front of so that's so photogenic. You're there at the right time with the right gear. It is very now. You could have what happened to Eric and I. We go out there for three solid days. We don't see a single cloud, nothing, zip. Which happens in the Southwest a lot. As we're driving to the airport at the end of the third day. <laughs> One little cloud shows up on the way to the airport to just go. I, I have a picture of it. A long and it cloud like there's the one cloud, cloud, one little cloud that just says, I could have been over there, but I wasn't. It wasn't and, even the wrong direction, too. It wasn't right. even in the right direction. And, but now we have sky replacement, so it doesn't, yep. you know, it's it not the end matter. of the world. But, but anyway, I, this has a lot to do with your success in any genre. So I know that there's people out there watching today that are saying that same thing. I don't get landscape photography. I don't get travel. I don't get people. I'm not a people photographer. And you're telling yourself all the things that you're not because you've never been successful at it. So you say, that's just not me. I'm just not interested in it. But if you went and took a great portrait of somebody, all of a sudden you're like, I can do this. Yeah. You know, wow, I got a really good shot. I think, you know, I, I never really thought about shooting portraits, but, and the difference is not that all of a sudden you gain some amazing technique or you use some crazy setting. It's you're standing in front of someone that is incredibly photogenic and maybe the light was great at the right time and maybe their expression and pose and it all came together and you're like, but I'm, but I'm a landscape photographer. How did I get this great person shot of this person? Yeah. Because you set yourself up for success. You just happen to be in the right place at the right time and all that stuff. And that's big. All right. Um, I, hey, uh, so anyway, uh, let me know if, what you think about this. Just drop yeah. me a comment. And by the way, that's how you win prizes here is to, is to get in the comments. Um, we don't come to your house and find you. You have to <laughs> find us. So if you leave a comment, tell us what you want to win. But also, let me know how you feel about this. Yeah. Like, it's, is there a genre that you've struggled with? Like, is there something where you go, now, you may just say, I'm uncomfortable in front of people. And if that's the case, then I also have a thing that you can try as well. And that would be uh, to hire a, hire a professional model and tell them up front, I, I want to get into photographing people. I don't know how to pose people. I don't, I'm uncomfortable talking to people. So now, will you come and do this shoot? Tell them up front. They'll be, they'll be the most patient person. They'll sit there and do, and, I, and I've told models before, look, I'm just doing a test. I want to try some new lighting. I want to try something else. They're like, sure, they don't care. They're getting paid the same amount either way. Yeah. So, but, but if you tell them up front, they're especially patient, friendly, kind, they'll pose for you as long as they want. And if you make mistakes and stuff, they don't care. Like you told them, I'm just, I'm starting out. Eric, Eric, I see a picture that Eric took of a person 
No, uh, well, because I want to, I want to, but I know we got to take a break. But yeah. I'd like to hear what Dave thinks on the on the subject as well. But I think what's interesting is, like you said, the one thing that I do find interesting is, I I find I'm best when I'm shooting a bunch of different things. That helps me to do like to get better at one thing is actually to shoot a bunch of different oh, yeah. things. Yeah, I was going to say um, the more the more you try the more new things you learn. We yes. said last night, yep. if you've never been in the studio, you'll learn a different kind of lighting, different kind of settings. But then if you do portrait and landscape, you can take people out to landscape yeah. and try something and else. Look at the slight stuff Joe does. And, and that's, where, that's where I kind of sit, right? So like, that's where like this shot that I took years ago, uh, this is of my daughter, right? So um, the shot here, uh, oh, I've got to start up my thing. They're going to be like, oh, you didn't start it up. You didn't start up the thing. Start up a thing. You have to start your thing. I have to start the thing. Should we restart the whole show? No, no, Just we don't have to do that. Let's restart. Yeah. 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 Today but. on the grid. <laughs> can you see it now? Can you see it now? No. Mm. How about we work on this on the break? Yeah. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, oh, we're so also... Fun. We're going to wrap up talking about this, but we also have something else. Also, we want to take your comments. Don't forget to enter the contest, and we'll talk to you in just a minute right after this break. <laughs> There are so many genres of photography where you're locked out of getting the good shots. Like you can't get close and you can't get into that special area. The pros can get there, they have special access and stuff. But you know what the great equalizer is? Air shows. Air shows are exploding for photographers. They love it because you can get right down in front. You got the same access. You can come back with shots that will absolutely blow everybody away. That's what I love about shooting air shows. Yeah, in this class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down all that stuff that you need to know to shoot your first air show, like the settings, how to program your camera, what lenses, what bodies you need. And then we're gonna get to the important stuff like composition and framing, where we're gonna break down all that for you you can be a master the first time you go out to your show. We're going to show you how to shoot jets, how to shoot props, how to shoot the statics. When you come back, your shots are going to look like a pros. So come and check out our brand new class exclusively at Kelby One. Hey guys, I'm Tuvi and I'm going to show you two really cool products that we at B Flat World sell. So the first one is our duo boards, which are double-sided hyper-realistic backdrops for food and product photographers. They come in two sizes. This is the larger side. We have all different types of textures and designs. These are some of the new ones that came out recently. And they also, there's a bag option available for them. And our other product, which is what we actually started the company with, it's called a V-flat. It's a foldable V-flat and it's used for portrait and studio photographers to control light on their subjects to either add light with the white side or use the black side to uh, subtract light or or even block like an unwanted uh, window light coming in. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back. Scott and Dave here. And, and uh, we're going to look at Mr. Kuhn as so, we have his computer. And, and so I'm yeah. going to look for a photo here. So we're going to look for a photo. But yeah, we're talking about this concept of, you know, I, I do like to shoot a lot of different things. So this is actually one of the first shots I ever did with flash, right? Like one of my first. It was my daughter on the beach. But this is the type of portrait work that I'll do now, you know, that because of that. But the key here, and I think what it is, is 
it's just figuring out and putting the effort in. All I did is put the effort in. Yeah. Like I'd never done it before. Put the effort in to figure out how to do it, then execute that. But from there, you learn so many different things. Because now I use flash and light painting and all that stuff for my night images all the time. Because I started to to realize from from doing this seven years ago that from that moment to now like i've realized that control of light at night and how i love it yeah and i love using night as my studio in wilderness so it's like i have the studio in wilderness and i love using the moon that way yeah. and using light but that all comes from being able to sculpt light where i wasn't just relying on the sun to be my primary and source of light. And you feel excited to try something different. And I, but that only came from, what I'm saying is, shooting different things. So I do, the other thing, I do a lot of wildlife photography. I don't share a lot of it, yeah. but I don't share a lot of it because I'm doing wildlife photography to practice. Yes. To intentionally practice panning and stuff because that's how I get good at aviation photography, which yeah. is the thing I really like to do. Like, I like wildlife photography. I think it's cool. But, you know, if you ask me, you want to go over to England and shoot, uh, yeah. you know, you guys have yeah, that like, canyon. Yeah. Like, it'd be like, yes, I want to go there and shoot jets over there. I'm not like, yeah, send me up to Alaska to shoot An eagles. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, it's awesome. Or bears, like, it's awesome. I would totally do it. But, I, you know, it's just where you put that effort. But yeah. you always have to be practicing <clears throat> on new things. And that's why I think, I think the photographers that I know that stretch themselves into those other areas are the photographers that's why i also carry a camera always with me yeah because you're always constantly practicing so what well, do you even, think even looking at glenn um when i met glenn he was a portrait photographer in the studio mm -hmm. then he kind of got into character portraits mm -hmm. compositing and then now he's a landscape photographer well he's all, but he's, he's all of those but things, all of those things. And that's but a, that's a, and he's, he's using them all and he's, he's using that yeah. experience that's what's so cool and yeah er, those are that's a great example glenn is a great example yeah i mean he, he but he's he's taking the techniques why his landscape photography is kind of amped up a little bit yeah it's because he's taking his techniques from his character portrait stuff that he was doing yeah and applying those techniques those same techniques but he's creating a different look that everybody's like "Ooh, that's yeah. cool i like that but he's drawing off of previous experiences. Yeah. And the evolution of you as a photographer, even though I'm not a photographer, but it feels like if you just stick with one thing, it's like, surely it's more fun to try other things. Like you said, you don't have to share it. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to share yeah. everything you photograph. You can just practice and try different things. And like you said, one day you get that great shot and you kind of, okay, I'm gonna spend a bit more time. I'm experimenting mm -hmm, yeah. with this rather than just be, nope, not for me, not for me yeah because that's what at the end of the day that's where a lot of that comes from i mean that's like uh like this shot here that's that's this is light painting where i'm using light to paint i don't know that that light to paint the rocks and the formation with the milky way you know but that comes from mastering this idea of sculpting light that came from studio photography yeah and you've got to put patience, time and patience and patience, effort into yeah. that. That's I not actually, happen. I bring up this shot because this is an interesting one because I actually was with two uh, German tourists there because this is in the, uh, the Bistai Badlands in um, New Mexico. And they're in their uh, old Volkswagen <laughs> like camper, camper van, van yeah. that they had rented. And they're talking our ears off and they're like, what you going to do? And I'm like, I'm going out about three miles to go light paint these rocks and these alien. I showed them some like pictures I've seen of it. And they were like, hey, can we go? So I hung out with them like, and they were helping me do stuff. It was kind of cool. But yeah, yeah to, to Scott's point, I mean, they're just very friendly and just, just wanted to enjoy life. And like you said, someone could even just say, hey, have you tried this? Or have you just tried standing over there yeah. and getting this from a different angle? And you, oh. and you just no, they were helping with like, the time. hey, I think it'd be better if we put a light like about you know 300 <laughs> yards down, lighten the the mountain range back there, and like, oh, sure, I'll go do it. <laughs> Move it a little to the left. <laughs> so, all right, and that's why Thanks. it is great having a having a, a people out there shooting with you. Yeah, obviously, it always feels like fishing. Like you've, people go out super early, they find the right location and they sit in their patient. They don't just rock up with a rod, chuck it in the water, catch a fish and go home. Yep. It's the enjoyment is like the challenge of catching the photograph.
There's, a, the image. there's another one that's a perfect example of this is light painting a foreground while I'm capturing a rocket all in one exposure, but that's from being able to sculpt light, balance light, being able to balance the exposures, and you come up with that image. But again, you wouldn't get there. I wouldn't get there if I didn't start mastering sculpting yeah. light, using light painting, and that all came from the studio. Yeah. So it's so, so cool how it comes from there, and then you can bring it all the way to where I'm light painting Earth, you know. All right, stall for just one more minute. Keep, all right, all right. I, that's why I keep on going. I keep on going. A, you're doing a good job I'm of trying. stalling. I'm trying. I have another topic, so. too, today, so. But it's a short one. And here, here's another example. Again, the Milky Way and the barn in there. Like, that barn would be black as black could be. It would just be dark no detail whatsoever and that's just three little lights positioned around painting but again that comes from that studio and yeah. being able to master these techniques and then apply it other places how much so do over you plan location because obviously oh, you know you know planning, you Mark, planning it's, it's all there you go to monument valley it's all there but pictures like this is like that barn just makes that photograph yeah, yeah you have yeah. to find those locations well, and then know how long you have to be well, there what so time. that's what i love about photography though and that's what i love about kind of like he does love the research part i yeah. do i love it like but that's where it is it's finding those little hidden gems and that's what i really like to do like i'll go to places like this summer we're going to we're going to do light painting and all this stuff yeah. in um south dakota but we're not gonna go to like the the iconic Yellowstone shot or Yosemite shot, we're going to actually work in the local area, tell the story, but find we're going to places just like this. Might yeah. be going to that exact place. Yeah. But, you know, it's finding those places where you're like, oh, okay, I've got like the perfect setting, the perfect uh, equation, but it's maybe not. But then you can do it at the cookie cutter locations too. Yeah, you can do it at the locations that everybody else is at too, because usually at night it's empty. I can go to places that during the day or during sunrise or sunset, 100 photographers, I go at night, I'm lucky if I have two. Have you lucky. ever done any landscape stuff where, like because England's a lot smaller, people own land. So how much of what you do, do you ever come across permission to be on? That This on barn site? was one we had to get just permission. You just call up the person that owns the property yeah. or go walk up to the, yeah, you know, that's part of the process. You have to scout and kind of yeah. do that stuff. Now, but there are, you can find places that are totally accessible. Like this same barn shot can be done in uh, the Grand Tetons. There's two old barns yeah. there that I've shot before. One of the barns that lines up with the Milky Way. And it just looks very similar to this. In fact, I'd probably find it. But. In fact, jo joking apart about Swindon, years ago when I used to work in this different part of Swindon, there was this farm and the sun sets behind the farm. Mm -hmm. And the farm's got one of those, oh, what I call American wind mm -hmm. tower things. And every time I used to drive past, there was this barn, there was a wind thing, the sun was setting behind it. And I just thought, even though I'm not a photographer, I would love to just take my camera up there and just try and get a good shot. And I contacted the guy and he just said, no, no one's coming on my land. And, and you're I mean, going to hit like, those. Yeah. You're going to hit those, right? You know, you're going to hit those like brick walls. I mean, you get that, you get that, I'm sure, a lot of times with client work where you're trying to do something awesome. And oh, then they're yeah. like, nah, we want the, we want the thing that doesn't look as good. Yeah. And you kind of have to go, well, I can't do that. I have to move on to something else. And it's sad because that whole, that all the stuff at the farm's demolished now. Oh. I was like, oh man. And I thought what, about sneaking Now that's, <laughs> that's actually a good selling point if you're ever talking to people uh, wanting to use their land, is preserving what's yeah. going on there. I've, that's I've been a good entryway into doing that stuff, yeah. is to kind of tell them, because you give them, give them the files afterwards, send them a print afterwards. Yeah. That really helps if you want to come back. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think if, if I If you want to come back, in, another yes. image i'd taken of a similar thing going hey look i'd love to capture like this location on your farm because this is what i've done before but i like went in cold i had no reference no point yeah. of reference it was literally i really want to get this shot yeah. so i can send it to the blind critique and i've just got an eric go that's the best shot of a farm well, I'll in tell sweden you, I've i'll tell seen. you what if you're 30 minutes from stonehenge yeah. that that is designed to line up with celestial yeah, events. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that place is like awesome for doing night stuff. Yeah. And I'm old, I've never been there. It's I'm on my old list. enough that I've, I've been in Stonehenge. When I, was, when I was at school, we did a trip when we were allowed in Stonehenge. Now you're not allowed anywhere near it, apart from summer solstice and winter solstice. They open it up. But I've actually got a photograph of me in the middle of Stonehenge. I was about 11 years old. 
back in 1943. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, let me try one more well, thing here. Hang on. Let's see. Uh, Leanne Church is saying, uh, I have family in Utah and Arizona. Oh, those, that's, the, that's the two states. Yeah. Uh, I really want to find time for me to shoot without making uh, my family feel like I'm there photographing more and spending time with the grandkids. How do you ba balance family and personal time? I'll tell you this. I, I mean, got it. Want, I, I do this constantly, right? I don't know. What's your answer? My answer is, and this works great. You're gonna you're gonna want to shoot Utah and Arizona at dawn. Yes. Your family is not gonna want to get up at dawn. You're gonna be. I'm leaving the house at five fifteen a.m. and they're like, "You go do that." I'll pick you, you up coffee and donuts on the way and back. Yeah. On the back, and, and show happy. up with coffee and donuts. They <laughs> can't wait for you to go shoot. Yep. So that's it. You're gonna be shooting at dawn. You're gonna get the best light. That's when you want to do it. And you're not missing any time with anybody because yep. they're all going to be asleep. And that's exactly how I do it. The same way, you know, and that's and the same thing on the one thing I can say at dusk is planning your dusk shoots around something that is very beautiful, that no matter who you are, photographer or not, they want to see you want to see yeah. it. And then what you do is you bring a meal. You bring some chairs, you bring, bring snacks, 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 you make it comfortable snack, for your family snack it, snack it, and you let them just experience it. like the beauty that is Utah yeah. and Arizona and they will stick around for the sunset because that, the, that transition from sunset to twilight in that area is amazing. So just make the environment comfortable so then you can go yeah, photograph. Yeah, the whole world comes out for sunset. Oh right? yeah, There'll sunset's be never a problem. There's hundreds of people there, you know, so, but dawn and, and sunset, here's the, there's your Here's shots. the other key. Only do dawn and sunset. Do not be that person who's shooting in the crappy light, taking yep. time away from yep. the family. Yep. That's the family time. That's the grandkid <laughs> Mid <-day>. time. <laughs> Midday, when it's just like, ah, this is terrible. No photography right now. Then go spend time with the family. It's a good balance. All right, you know what would be great right now? Probably a break. No. But before the break, a Photoshop we got to do a tip. Could be time for a Photoshop tip. Man, they're so on Photoshop tip, yeah. Photoshop tip, yeah. Photoshop. All right, I got a tip for you. This is a, a, a shockingly good tip, ready? <clears throat> All right, so you guys know that, that Photoshop has uh, select sky, select subject, right? Yeah. So you could mm -hmm. go in here and go under the select menu and there it is, select subject. You don't have to be in camera raw or any of that stuff. All right, so you can just choose select subject. So let's do that, here we go. Let's just go select subject. And it did pretty good, except for it didn't select the roses the bride's <laughs> holding. It didn't select part of her neck. It missed a bunch of stuff. Now, you could say, well, we could just fix that by, you know, getting a lasso tool or something. Or you can use this special trick. Ready? So if you are connected to the Internet, and you are, everyone's connected to the Internet, right? You're going to go, and instead of going up here to the select menu, you are instead going to click on either the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool, either one of those two tools. And that brings up this button that says select subject. If you click it, you're going to get the same exact results. However, here's the tip. There's a little down arrow facing right to the right of it. If you click on it and choose cloud, you get the results take a couple, like two seconds longer, but the results are tremendously better. Watch. Hit cloud version. Now click on select subject. Perfect. Done. It selected all of the stuff. It didn't miss the things by her neck. Didn't miss the, what do you think, Dave? Come on here, Photoshop well, guy. I covered that in my class. Damn. How to determine between selecting using your Damn. computer power or the cloud. Accuracy or speed. It's a great tip. Well, that kind of takes the fun out of my tip, Dave. No, no, because it's, it's a good tip. Because but wait, wait. There's I got more. To, I got to There's promote more. a new class. There's more. Yeah, you, go on. Right. You, well, well, wait. Let's okay, just, okay. Do you have anything else to add to this? Any other tip that expands this, Dave? I have something oh. I could say, but I don't want to infringe no. on something else you might go say. Go ahead. Say it. What? If what? I saved it, if I saved it, do you know what I, what I love about saving images of JPEGs in Photoshop? It's is, not that. No. It's not that. No. Uh, no, I give it. I, I give in. Oh, I give in. got him. 
Uh oh. Anytime you can burn the guest, extra five points in heaven. <laughs> Here we go. Go, go, go. Go up under the Photoshop menu to Photoshop Preferences to Image Processing, and you can make the cloud one your default. You can go and choose details. Did you show that in your class? I showed that in my class. Dang! This is why you have people like me. I wondered why we had people like you. I knew there was a reason. I kept saying to Eric, now, why do we have people say, like this? Since I've checked that and put that on, my life has been a lot better. Yeah, leave it on. Leave it on. I leave it on. I had to turn it off yes. to show you. That's yes. one of the things I'm doing. My life is way better since I did that. Just do this and you're going to get better results. And it's going to take an extra second or two, but your results yeah, will be so That's much all better. it is. It'll just take that extra second or yeah. two. Just a second. But it's, it's worth like it for that. Yeah. For selecting. Like, I'd rather second or two more precise than taking the 20 minutes it used to take yeah. to actually do the selection. It felt now, like that, uh, was it speed, cheap, or quality? Yeah. But in this, it's just All right, now, quality. here's what I want you to do. Yes. Can we go one up on Dave? Can we go one up on him? No, that's me. That's, that's, that's Dave. Where Thank am I you. looking there? All right, yeah, all right. I want you to take a nice look at Dave because this is the last time you're ever going to see him on the grid. <laughs> <laughs> because guests are supposed to just take the heat. They're not supposed to go, and I covered that in oh. my class. But my class isn't out yet, and I thought it was good to promote it. Yeah, I'm just trying to promote it. I might just have the editors I'm, cut that part. I'm just going to get an Uber. I'm yeah, just that, gonna that, that's going to go out yeah, of the class. Let me get you, let's get a little, taxi for Clayton. Let me, let me get you an Uber. Come on, let's, we, the least we can do. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad you covered it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of killed my tip there, but uh anyway you guys i hope that you enjoyed that uh we're going to take a break coming up next we're going to talk a little bit more about photoshop because i want to talk about something that happened on my facebook page this week mm -hmm. stick around when we come back we're going to be talking about why the internet is the internet <laughs> Come join me in my new class on creative portrait photography using outdoor light. Have you ever struggled with using midday sun to light your portraits and light your subject? I'm gonna show you some creative ways in which you can play with midday harsh sun. We're also gonna play with using architecture in your frame to frame your subjects and or to make beautiful fine artwork. We'll use leading lines, play with composition, we will hide from the sun, show you creative ways to use midday sun. Additionally, we're also going to dance around with some creative ways to use golden hour sun. And guess what guys, in this class, we're gonna combine harsh midday sun with diffused light. So come join me now and watch my new class on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. We can't repeat that on air again. Can we do our trivia contest? Yeah, let's do it. Trivia time at Kelby One, yeah. Damn, 
you want it. Yeah. Trivia. On it. Trivia. That was nailed. Trivia. Nailed that one. Eric, right. what is our tr- photography trivia question? And the first person that answers Eric's question wins uh, so, something. So, yeah, just uh, in the chat, tell us, uh, Christina's monitoring it, the right answer, and that is, in what year, it was in January, in what year did Adobe um, announce and put in select subject, which we just saw? Oh, it was. So when? I think it was. Wasn't it around? Did Adobe? I'm pretty add sure it was select it was subject. That year. They were talking at the time about Adobe Sensei as well. Yeah, Sensei. Sensei. All right, I have I have a little story before I get mm-hmm. to my topic here. So, uh, you know, I just spoke in New York, and I did a uh, one of my classes. I did was Lightroom. Yeah. And I spoke in in Moab. No, can can mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Talking about uh, Lightroom. All right. So I, I had <clears throat> Lightroom and Photoshop sessions. So I had a photography session too, but I, did, I had this also post because I, I love the post stuff. So I asked the crowd, so can I see a show of hands? How many people here are using Lightroom Classic? Now I asked this in, <laughs> I asked this in New York and I asked this in both. Okay. In both cases, I said, how many are using Lightroom Classic? Every single hand in the room goes up. I said, who's using Lightroom Cloud? Two people in New York out of this huge crowd, like standing room only, two people in New York and one person in, just one person in Utah. In, in Utah. And you know what I told them? Like this one woman, she like raises her hand, like I, I'm like only person in the room. And I said, it's okay. It's for children. <laughs> wah, wah, when you get wah. in this, when you get in these areas where you have serious photographers, uh, yeah. Nobody's using that You're cloud right. version. I mean, that's the thing. But Nobody your children is. are, and that's what's important. Yeah, didn't you go back in time and fix this? Oh, we got a trivia I prize did. winner. We got a trivia prize winner. It was five years ago, over five years ago, in 2018. Wow. wow. Congratulations to? Sharon Scarf. Congratulations, well Sharon. Hey, can we have, so let's do our, our giveaways too, and then I'll talk about my other thing. It's short, the thing I'm going to talk about. All right, and then okay. the giving away, let's see what other giveaways we got. And that was for the Platypod disc that Sharon won. And then uh, we have uh, Susan Stein Pazinski is winning uh, the Light It, Shoot It, Retouch It book. And then we have Sharon B winning the uh, Dave's InDesign book. And then we've got Rhonda Kennedy winning the On One No Noise 2023. Matthew Sheets winning the V flat. And then Al. God is art. God is art. Winning the travel photography book. If you just email us over at gridprize at kelby1.com, we'll verify information, then send you out your prize. Hey, by the way, while you're over at kelby1.com, you can, you know, join. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really nice. I think there's a class coming from uh, Dave. Yeah. Hey, I also. has a tip in it. Hey, I also did a whole entire. I also did a class, by the way. I also did a class on just on masking. I did a brand new masking class from mm-hmm. scratch, just on masking. So, uh, also we have an iPhone photography conference coming up that is going to be a Oof. record breaker. Uh, yeah. It is coming up. It is a live two day conference. It's coming up March 28th and 29th. It is the iPhone photography conference. There's so much interest in this topic. We've got a great group of instructors, and you'll notice Dave Clayton is not in there because he's not allowed <laughs> to use the telephone. Uh, mm-hmm. Only, only during visitation times. Yeah, uh, and uh, we he's, also have he's got on release right now. He's on release right now, and uh, anyway, we've got all kinds of great stuff. Look at all these classes we have over two days, and you get an archive for a year of all of the different classes that we've done. So you can go watch any ones that you missed. You can rewatch them, and we also have a class the day before. We have two conference sessions. Uh, one is from Larry Becker giving you, uh, if you've never done one of our online conferences, Larry gives you a great orientation, and Larry's so good. And then Jefferson Graham, who is a super iPhone photographer, does an iPhone photography podcast and all that, is going to give you the beginner's guide. So if you're kind of new to iPhone photography, mm-hmm. he's your man right there. Yeah, and that'll set you up for the next th- two days. Set you up for the next couple of days. So that come a day early, and that's included. There's no extra charge for that pre-conference. And thing. that's the other thing is if you can't make it, you can still sign up and get everything. Yep. All righty. So uh, 
I, this week, I was, uh, I was working in my hotel room a lot, you know, because it was cold outside. I'm from Tampa. If it gets in the 30s or 20 degrees, we stay indoors. So That's I'm true. indoors in, uh, in Moab during the day. It's bad light anyway. Yeah. And I, I started working on a bunch of different stuff. So I'm working on some slides for a presentation. I'm working on some things for my book. I'm working on mm -hmm. blog posts. I did my blog posts early for Monday. I had all these different things I'm working on. And as you're working, you know, I got to save a JPEG, save another JPEG, put this on Facebook, save. Mm -hmm. So in the course of an hour, I realize I have flipping seen the same dialogue box again and again and again. So I'm going to show you this dialogue box that I am talking about. Give me, uh -oh. just, give me just a second. And right here, this dialogue box right here, the JPEG options dialogue box. Now, oh, this I'm, one. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I see this box. So if I, if I save 14 pictures in an hour, I saw these 14, this come up 14 different times over the course of an hour. I never, ever, ever, ever <laughs> change these settings. It is the same settings I've been using for the last 10 years. Yep. But every time I go to save, so if in, in the course of an hour or two hours, I have to save 14 files, I see this 14 times. So I did a very simple post on Facebook. I did it on my blog and on Facebook. Here's what <laughs> I said, dear Adobe, there it is. You could speed up our workflow in Photoshop by adding one checkbox. The checkbox that I said was, can you just say, either make this my default? If I make it my default, I never need to see it again. Yeah. Or just put a checkbox, don't show again, yeah. or whatever. Or make it a preference That's in the a, preferences. A, make it a preference so you can set it as a default. It could live yeah. Easily. I don't, I've been seeing this my whole life. If you want to speed up my workflow, don't make me stop, interrupt my workflow to hit OK in a box that's always going to be OK every single time as long as you let me put in what i want to the numbers right. i want to put in and now done so so what i'm asking you to do before is something very very simple i even said this is low-hanging fruit add a checkbox i've gotten adobe in the past to actually add a checkbox to things i so do you know that when you yep. used to save a multi-layered file it would always bring up a thing that says do you want to save your file your layers that are hidden if they're hidden i never want to see those <laughs> right so they added a checkbox <laughs> called don't it. show again. And that was the, I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. They even called me and said, we're adding that checkbox. So every once in a while, I get something in there. So I'm just asking, hey, this would make us, so it would. It would yeah, be I agree with you. I agree with you. All right. So I got, I got hundreds and hundreds of comments. Let me just real quick go to my Facebook page and just, let me just look real quick and see. While you're where looking for that, do you know yes. what that reminds me of? It's the sticker on the Apple. When they started putting stickers on apples, you're like, oh, damn, there's a sticker on my apple. But now it's just, you just get used to it being there. It's annoying every time, but you just get used to it. And mm -hmm. it's not until you said it yesterday, it was like, yeah, that should be, that should be a preference to turn that. Because yeah. there's preferences for everything else. Mm -hmm. And if I want a low res, I'll use export as. Yeah. And I get more choice. All right. I got 282 comments, 2,000 likes, 2,200 likes, and 40 shares. All right. So here's the thing. 75% of the people said, yeah, that would be great. That's a simple thing. The other 25% said, why don't you make an action? Why don't you write a script? Why don't you switch to another program? Why don't you use Bridge? Why like, this is what is wrong with the internet <laughs> right there. I'm talking to Adobe and it's a simple thing. It's just, but what they're doing is, so we call this fanboying. It's like, I, yeah. I remember I had a, this is a perfect example of what a fanboy is. I was complaining years ago about my Apple laptop. They had two USB ports on the side, side by side. If you plug in one USB, the second USB wouldn't fit in there. Mm. Like you couldn't fit it in there. You had to buy an adapter that's thinner. Like Apple, why don't you move it this far apart? 75% of the people said, yeah, that would be great. 25% blamed it on me. <laughs> you're using the wrong kind of stuff what it is is they will never say it's apple's fault yeah it is it's always whatever is wrong with your car mm. with your product it's with a bigger with one here. apple you're talking about right it's it's, it's so fan 25 percent of people that make it where we can't have nice things that's right we yeah. can't have nice things so i honor all these people and, and of On course both sides, and some by the way have to be <laughs> insulting i'm surprised mr kelby you didn't know you could create an action for that yeah how long have you been doing Photoshop? 
Well, you can create an action for that. You would write an action for that in no time, but you shouldn't have to use you an action. You shouldn't have to use an action, and then I'm going to have to, what if I want to save it, uh, save these things in different places? Because I do. I don't want to save in the same location well, every time. create another action for that, Scott. Well, then now I'm creating an action for all the different <laughs> folders action, I want to create it action, in. For an action. For an action. Or, or am I going to just have it prompt me to where I want to save it? Well, that's another click, too. So people are saying, just use the bridge. Yeah, oh, I, I yeah. need another program. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. I need. I need yeah. a Especially don't the don't, don't put a checkbox. <laughs> don't put and then there's all these people like, why don't you just use batch exporting? It's not 14 photos at once. It's 14 photos over Iver, time, yeah. over an hour. Well, I think uh, and going and saving in different places. I think Scott that Capture One does this. And people wrote that. I think Capture One does this. Let's go and spend some more money. How does on that bit of how does that help <laughs> anybody? How does that help anybody who is a Photoshop user? And by the way, Capture One and Photoshop are two very different products. One of them charges you a ton of money and the other one's just a monthly fee. So, long story short, and they're totally Capture different. One does this. Totally different, <sighs> totally different. Hey, you know what? Why don't we do this? Go to my Facebook page and just list all the other programs that don't do that. Just go ahead and start listing. Pro Text edit doesn't make me do that. If I use preview, it doesn't mean. Just start listing programs that don't require you to choose your quality setting every single time. That's a good waste of space. But if you look through here, I'm just I'm stunned. But this is what's wrong with the internet. Is is I would create an action and inside a keyboard command to it, and then add it to my Sense Labs quick keys. So. Uh. Image processor and bridge can do this easily. You're right. I should switch to a different program. Especially, again, the bridge. And by the way, so I'm going to go to image processor every time I want to save one photo? Yeah. I, I just don't, don't get it. But thank you for Dennis, Dennis Dunbar, who well, wrote, you know what it is. Bridge has All been dead to me for well over a decade. <laughs> who uses the bridge anymore these days? <laughs> I'm guessing those who still have <laughs> a floppy drives. disk, a DVD printer, and zip <laughs> I love Bridge. And SCSI drives. I of course, you know why you like Bridge? Because you're a graphic designer. That is exactly yeah. who needs the Bridge. Yes. But photographers, yeah. the Bridge, there's a reason why it's free. free. It's yeah. crap. And do you know what the answer will be from Adobe when you go that, that? Because they'll say the same answer for everything else. But if we take it away, it'll break everyone's actions. Oh, the Bridge? No. The, the, the JPEG thing, JPEG quality. Checkbox. Because if you create an action, it's relying on that next. It, if you yeah, take that away, everyone who's got an action that's got like well, then why don't you make it a preference? If it's a preference, yeah. then then it's, I agree, it should be a preference. You should turn it off. Sure, it's, a preference. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care what what they use, but it's an easy thing to fix. And I'm just I'm just stunned. The last thing I expected was everybody to to be number one ragging on me about it. Yeah, like you're really giving me crap about it because I wanted to add Adobe to add a checkbox. It's a JDI. Yeah, a JDI yeah. is a series of things that Adobe call, does called, look, it's a little thing, it's just, just do, do it. it. JDI, yeah. just do it. It's a little thing, we can fix it this weekend. It's low hanging fruit, just do it. Add that checkbox, make our lives better. I got a bunch of those for Lightroom. Oh, I could do this. I could do a whole show <laughs> on JDIs they could do to Lightroom that would just make our lives so easier. I've even done videos and sent things to f friends at Adobe going, look, fix this thing. and. It, they never get done. Maybe, Everyone, that's maybe, not true. Every once maybe in a while. Maybe you just got to start saying, well, Capture One will do this. Capture One will do this. Microsoft Office will do this. Apple's Preview will do this. Let's go name all the other <laughs> software that also does it. <laughs> and you know what? I love when, when people write that. PowerPoint. Back. Like, look, I, I, I have some information for you guys. Can I say this, Eric? Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll sit back and relax. All right. We're getting into it now. Do Let's you know? See. So it's coming to a British invasion. I just here. saw this in a business report. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, and so, Do you know how many creative subscribe users Adobe has? The Creative Cloud subscribers. Oh, yeah. 10 million. 27 million. Wow. 27 million people. So for all of those people who are complaining about, oh. No, I, those are full CC. Like, no, this is everybody that subscribes for, to the Creative everybody. Cloud, yeah. some Creative Cloud some version. Creative Cloud because yeah, you could right. just subscribe to Photoshop, you could just yes. subscribe to Premiere, yeah. but they have 20, 27 million. million people. Wow. And then somebody at Utah was complaining about the subscription model. 
And they're like, by the way, when did this subscription model come out, Mr. Kuna? When and did Adobe 20 Switch? 2011. 2011. Fully, October they of 2011. fully, they went 2012. Yeah. They, they announced it in October I'm 20. I'm very familiar with it. 2011, very yes. Very familiar with it. All right. And it there's hurts. still people, it I hurts. will not subscribe to my software. Look, if you write Adobe, a big long post, or you go on my thing and you write about the subscription model and how bad it is, here's what happens at Adobe. It comes in or you call and they're like, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. We're too busy popping champagne corks. <laughs> High five and everybody, there's confetti and balloons in the hall because they have 27 million subscribers. If you think in your lifetime they are ever going to sell any of this crap again, but you know what I wish they would do? Here's what I wish they would do, honestly. Just go make a copy of Photoshop available for $799, which was the retail price. Yes. Make it seven, now. Well, it'd have to be more like $999. Yeah. Right, you'd have to increase the price for inflation. So now it's $1,000, but here's what I want. Here's why I want people to buy it. So those people who won't spend $9.99, which is a third of a Wendy's value meal, by the way. <laughs> All right, you're not gonna spend, and by the way, I have a friend of mine that every time he goes through a drive-in, he sends me the receipt, the receipt. <laughs> to show me how many times more it is than a monthly <laughs> subscription. But anyway, here's why I want Adobe to make it available. So someone goes and buys the $1,000 Photoshop, and then three months later, Adobe an announces a new masking thing, but you don't get it. You don't get this amazing new feature because you bought the perpetual you, license. You bought the license Only at that the stage. 27 million people that subscribe, they all get the feature. You pay the thousand and don't get it. And then you'll go online and you will gripe and you will complain and you will go crazy. And the next thing you know, Will Smith climbs up on stage and smacks yeah. you in the face. <laughs> That's <laughs> how it goes. What's that sound? That's the sound of a million keyboards suddenly going. <laughs> what was that? That's it. You're wrong. So anyway, I'm going to step wrong. off my softbox. My soap no box. Soap soap box. Box. Somebody the other day called it a softbox, and I had to explain the whole soap thing because it was a, a young kid. Yeah, soapbox. Anyway, it's been lovely chatting with you. Mm. Yes. And now well, I appreciate that. that. Nice I appreciate that, that, that venting sometimes. Yeah, sometimes so you just have to, vent. you know, you have to let it go. Because I mean, it has been a while. It, it has, has been, been a long a, time, and a, people still come up. Do you think Adobe's going to switch a, back? It's been a decade. No, it's they're not going to switch Over back. Over a decade. No, they're never ever going to switch back. I, so. I would love, and, and, I would love honestly, to do a post one day where they say. Um, you know, we've been doing the Creative Cloud now for 12 years. We've got 27 million subscribers. But Jeff from New Jersey has said he hates the subscription, so we're going to reverse the whole thing. Like when you do an event, <laughs> you do an event and say, hey, we're going, to, we're going to do this big new event. It's going to be September the 7th for a week. And then people go on Facebook, oh, I was going on holiday that week. This is, this is no good for me. So oh, the well, we'll switch go, it. We'll switch yeah. it. We'll just re we'll transfer all the tickets and reprint everything because... Because Jeff's on holiday. From yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. Jeff from New Jersey sucks. Yeah. Jeff does suck. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've exhausted the fun that we can have in one show. I will say it's lovely to have Dave Clayton here. It's lovely to have Dave Clayton anywhere. On my last appearance. <laughs> on his last grid. appearance on yeah. the grid. Enjoy it while you can. Well, no. Hey, there's a reason why we've hired Dave for 10 classes. It's not just luck. <laughs> He's very, very good. And I love his classes. Uh, and, and I remember... Uh, being at Photoshop World, and I stuck my head into one of Dave's classes, and the very first thing he showed, I never knew before. The very first that. thing, and I'm like, I hate this guy. <laughs> the very first thing, he's getting ready to do a class, and I walk in, and I'm like, and it was a fairly important thing that I use to this day, and I'm like, that son of a gun. That gave me so much confidence <laughs> that I was in the right place. <laughs> I was so good. I was so confident I wrote a book about it. <laughs> he was so confident he wrote a book about it. And I told him, make sure that tip's in this book, and it is. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Dave. Thank you for having me. Where can people go learn more about you in the crazy world of Dave Clayton? They can go to itsdaveclayton.com or on social media. I'm itsdaveclayton on everything. Reason being, so I couldn't get Dave Clayton. <laughs> there's a, there's, so a, there's an imposter out there that just took, selfishly took Dave Clayton. So I'm itsdaveclayton. Um, and the thing that was very selfish yeah, of them. it was yeah they should defer to you it happens but look at that logo all Let right leave. mr kuna yes did you shoot a launch this week last week yeah did you yeah, show any pictures that. did you show any pictures 
No. Can you show any pictures as our parting shot no, here? Oh, here. Yeah, probably could. Um, yeah. All right. I got some. All right, here we go. Let's take. So here's uh, the astronauts driving by the VAB in their new Teslas. Did a nice little slow shutter pan. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. You know. um, then this is a shot just from the, the top of the VAB uh, shooting down the rocket vehicle assembly building. So you're up at the kind of tall. There's the rocket up in the upper atmosphere that's like that nebula. Hey, by the way, I saw Super Cluster HQ shared an animation. Oh, yes, yes. Of your thing. Yes. And then this one is interesting. This was an experiment where this is actually, well, if I go to the next one, you see, there you got the, the first stage re-entry burn that's coming down. And then the second stage, and that's at night. So that's like really dark. And I the like sky the way you can range. see the clouds and stuff yep. and some blue. Yeah, because that was the clouds and the stars behind it. That's actually what we saw just amped up because I'm shooting with a, this is one where I experimented and shot an F1.2. So ah. I let in a bunch of light, really in tight, trying to see I if like I could that. capture it. That's a very I interesting. I was a little, I, w I went, this is where I was about to degree off because I was going for the plume to be in the center of the frame. And I had to like eyeball it with my compass. I was yeah. about to. Hey, didn't didn't you think the same thing? It was a degree yeah. off. Oh, I it was a degree was, off. I looked yeah. at that, and my all I could think of was I that's like off by say, one degree. It's all I could. Like but, it, but it is really cool. And, and then here's another shot. This was actually taken with one of. Uh, this was taken with the Samsung. So this is a Samsung. That's or no, a th phone. This is a phone shot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a, actually. I take that back. That is the Google Pixel. Oh, the Google yeah. Pixel. Mm -hmm. Eric has many phones. And that is the Samsung. I could, tell, I could tell. I could tell the difference. Yeah, but so that, that, again, that's Google Pixel. That's Google that's, Pixel. That's, that's Samsung. That's a degree off as well. That's a degree and off. And then it's farther up in that. This is like way out there, way up in the atmosphere. That's like an alien egg, isn't it? Is that yeah. a Chinese balloon? <laughs> oh, look at right there. A Chinese balloon. <laughs> Chinese balloon right there. <laughs> and that's it. That's what I got. Very nice. Very nicely done. Thank you. All right. So where can people go follow you on Instagram? It's just Eric Kuna, E R I K K U N A, on everything. There so, you go. He's got a unique yeah. name. Nobody has it but him. Yep. You don't have to use it. Actually, Eric Kuna. there is one other Eric Kuna. They spell the same way? He does, and he's in Poland, where All right. I'm from. I, I'm still trying to figure out how we're related somehow because yeah. there's just yeah, no there's... way, like, some. He's a bowler. That's his thing. He's a bowler. All right, he's a bowler. So maybe I could have been a bowler. He's a roller. He's a bowler. Yeah. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to our lovely guest. Thanks to Christina and her crew. And uh, we will catch you guys. Maybe. Won't be either me or Eric, but the grid will roll on somehow mm -hmm. next we'll Wednesday. And if you're in Switzerland, I'll see you there.